Hi, in this video, I'm going to walk you through the Light Hybrid 4G framework Hello World example. I wrote a tutorial for this example, and the tutorial can be accessed from uh, the uh, document site. find the site yeah. so this is the website for the documentation and you can find tutorial here hello world hybrid ser uh, server and services it has a lot of steps and I'll walk through all the steps in this video so that you can get uh, the detail regarding to where is the website, how the source codes look like, and uh, how to run the uh, command line for each steps. The Light Hybrid framework is the one we are using uh, a lot internally. It's a modularized monolithic framework as well as a service framework. For for an application, you just create a server uh, project with all the dependencies and wire in all the cross cutting concerns like security, auditing, matrix, exception handling, correlation, etc. Once you have the server uh, created, you don't have any uh, live service on this server. You can create services with a uh, uh, live code gen to generate or scaffold uh, project, a service project, and uh, create handlers on the service. Then you can deploy the services to the server instance. It can be one service or multiple services. You can even add new services later on. So this gives you the flexibility uh, to create monolithic application but each individual service still like uh, develop independently, test independently, and deploy it independently. The first thing we need to do is prepare the, uh, the workspace. So in the workspace, we we basically need to check out several uh, projects from uh, the website, uh, GitHub website. So we need to check out the light example for G, and we need to check out the mod uh, model config. We need to check out the light code gen. So those three projects should be checked out, and we are using light code gen to scaffold the project, and we have all the uh, schema and the configuration defined in model config for the code gen. Also, we are going to generate the code inside the light example for G. Let's open the terminal so we can walk through the uh, workspace. My workspace is uh, I'm using network NT under uh, my home directory. So I've already got everything checked out so we can uh, start our tutorial right now. The first thing first we need to do is just uh, uh, in the tutorial we remove the uh, existing directory in the light example for you. Now we don't need to do that. I'll just walk through the code so we know exactly what we are trying to do. The first thing first, we need to generate the server project. Uh, with the light code and build, you can uh, generate a server project uh, very easily with uh, the uh, command line. So first, let's walk through the, uh, the generation code. We're gonna go just go here. Within this project model config, we have hybrid folder. Within this hybrid folder, you have hello world. We have server, service one, and the service two. 
So within server, you have uh, this uh, config.json. This is a configuration file for uh, server uh, scaffolding. With this configuration file, you can see we generate uh, a hello project with a group of comnet1t and all the packages and uh, all other things like a port number, enable HTTPS, uh, HTTPS port, and uh, enable HTTP2. So that's all the configuration for the generation. Once we uh, get this uh, step uh, completed to create all the configuration uh, for the server, we can we can generate the server using this command line. The command line is very simple. You go to the network T and you just run this Java dash jar, uh, light code gen CLI, and uh, pass in the framework is a light hybrid 4G uh, server. The output will be in this directory. Example for uh, 4G hybrid hello world server. And the configuration is coming from this folder. So we just uh, walked through the configuration file already. Once you uh, finish this generation, you will see the generated code in in this directory. Let's go to So this is a server directory. We've already generated and this is already built in the uh, target directory. So let's first walk through the server uh, source code. If you look at the source code, there is nothing in this uh, in this project. It's just like uh, you have a configuration, all the configuration for this uh, for this server and uh, all the uh, handlers were in in the server. Uh, YAML. This is all the handlers we are, we are going to use for security, traceability, correlation, auditing, matrix, etc. And you have a, a test folder and nothing's over there. So basically this is skeleton. You have all the conf uh, dependencies defined in this uh, in this uh, pom data smell for the server. If your application need any extra dependency, you just need to add here. Once we have the server generated, the next thing we need to do is we need to generate the service one. For service one generation, we need to take a look at the, the configuration for service one. So we are in, in this uh, hello world uh, model config folder. So you can see for service one, we have gen this is a configuration file for co light code gen. You can see we are using name service one and I, everything else is almost the same like uh, uh, the server. Uh, we also have another file called uh, schema.json. If you look at schema.json, you have host service, it's called service one, host light api.net, this is my own domain uh, for the portal. You have two actions, one is query, you have version, you have a handler name, you have scope, which is a OAuth scope. You have a schema to define the body of the request or the data portion of the body. You have parameter one, parameter two, both are strings and requires parameter one, parameter two. Another action is info. And it's very similar. You need a, a parameter called filter and the filter is required. So this is a schema gonna be used by the framework to validate the request. Once we generate the code, you can see the source code. Let's open uh, the service one we generated. So this is the service one. You open the service one. Okay, we uh, open another window. Let's open in this window. This window. So to generate the code, you have two handlers. You have info, and I update the info to return just the info. 
the generate code that will return just empty uh, string. For query, I just return query. And you can see we have a info test and query test. If you look at info test, it's, it's very simple. You basically just uh, start the server. The server started from test server, and then you send the request to the server. The request is just like this. You are calling API slash, slash API slash JSON, just like REST API, and uh, you basically send a post request to the to the to the server. And you can see the body of the post request will be host, service, action, version, and then you have data field. The data field that you have this filter, uh, value is value one. So this is the for info. We know like we define the data object just have a, it, it just has a one uh, data element it's called filter here you have this test case you can run the test case and to ensure your uh, handler works and this is another one you have test case as well to to make sure it works once it's working you can just start uh, the server with the, the, the jar file include in the server class pass. So let's let's try to uh, you know what let's finish the, the the second service and we can start all of them together. We have a second service. Uh, if you go to this website you can see the service tool configuration almost the same you have a, just a name is the service tool in the schema you basically have a, a, a same host a service name becomes service tool and you have a, a action names a command and handler command old and another action is command and command new you can see the difference is this version is 010 and this one is 011. So basically this, for this particular service, it's called command service. We have two different handlers. One is an old version, the other one is new version because new version is not backward compatible. So you have both versions running in the same service. After generating the code, you can see the code. I'll walk through the code. Open service two. Using this window, you can see we have this uh, uh, command new. We just return new and the command old, we return just a string old. For the test case, it's very similar. Uh, you just uh, pass in this body. And here we, you, we pass in 011. And in the end, we expect this returns new because this is a new uh, handler. And this is the old one. We pass uh, the same object with the version is zero one zero. So the re return value will be old. So once this is tested, you have you can build this, the the server the server will, uh, sorry services. Both services will generate the jar file. You can let's take a look at the jar file. Go to the target folder. So you can see the jar file for service one is only 6k. 6k is very small jar file. And let's take a look at the second one. This one is about six, uh, six k as well. So you can see those two jar files are very, very small because it only contains the handler class, nothing else. Oh, except the handler class, it contains a schema file because uh, the server is going to be combined both schemas together, so that uh, using the schema to do the routing and the validation as well as security because in the schema you do define the OAuth scopes. In order to start a server. 
we basically copied everything in uh, copy those two jars into this folder the tmp service folder so you can see service one uh, and service two jar are copied to this tmp folder so now let's start the server with the command line let's go to the server folder and uh, let's copy the command line to start it. Okay. Deploy service two. Okay. The command line will be like this. You go to the target folder and then start server with the uh, cl class class, hello, which uh, jar, this is a server jar, and then slash tmp slash service slash star, which contains two jar files from uh, service one and service two. Let's just uh, copy this command line. And we're we'll start server here. Now the, ser uh, the, uh, the service is up running. You can see we have a handler size four. Those two, uh, those are the handlers we loaded by the by the server. And you're listening to uh, four, eight four four three. Now let's make this screen a little bit smaller, and we can test the server to see what's. Yeah, we have several command you can you can run. This is a just a call. Uh, this is a calling query service actions query, and you can see returns query. And if you run the other service, this returns old, and another one would return new yeah new here so you can see like we have a a, a server instance and the, once you drop in a small jar files uh, a small jar file into the service folder and restart server, server instance it will load the handlers within that jar file and to basically combine all different services together in the same monolithic application. So if we go to this uh, uh, summary, you can see first, like uh, what we are trying to do is we are trying to save uh, the production cost because you don't in the in the normal REST you every service you have a microservice you have a container, and uh, each container has some uh, extra memory uh, usage. So now we only need one container in the production and we can have multiple services deployed in the same container. Those services, they are not, uh, they're not the same like uh, the old monolithic. They are modularized monolithic. Every service, they work independently. Developers, they work on, you can have multiple developers working on the individual service and uh, they all respect the contract, which is uh, the schema definition. Once all services deploy in the same instance, they can interact with each other uh, based on the API calls. So nothing going to be mixed. Every service still like uh, working independently. <coughs> but the final deployment still is monolithic. This saves a lot of like on production provisioning. You don't need that many VMs. At the same time, you can evolve each individual service like independently without impacting other services. In the future, if you want to add a new service, you can just uh, scaffold a new project and after you finish, test it and uh, uh, compile it and just deploy the jar file into this one server instance. In the future, if you have one service got a lot of volume, you can just uh, uh, divide that service into a separate in, uh, server instance so that you can handle the volume like uh, with uh, individual service scalab scalability. 
The other benefit with this framework is uh, this is a service framework. You can see for one team, you can create a server with all the uh, cross-cutting concerns, all the dependencies defined in the server. And other developers, they don't need to care about anything regarding to security, valid, validation, matrix, like correlation, all kind of like cross-cutting concerns. You just build your handler, scaffolding application uh, from the like code gen, build your handler and you drop in to a server instance, every cross cutting concern will be handled by the server itself across all different services deployed on the same instance. So in this case, this is a service framework. This tutorial uh, just a, a start uh, starting point so that I can uh, understand how uh, hybrid 4G works. For production usage, you in most cases you are going to package uh, the server instance into a Docker container, and you map that service folder into a file system into the container so that uh, whenever you have a new service drop in, you just res restart the server container. That new service will be loaded along with the existing services. If you need more information for this framework, all the other examples, you can take a look at uh, uh, all other services we build in the uh, NetWNT repository. For example, uh, the Light Portal, uh, the Light uh, Config Server, they all using uh, ser uh, service uh, Light Hybrid 4G framework. Most of our services are built into, in this framework because the flexibility we have, as well as uh, uh, the efficiency compared with the uh, REST framework. That's all. Thank you. Bye-bye.